Good morning, dear friends. On this Saturday of the fifth week of Easter, we will be celebrating Mass of our Blessed Mother. In this Mass, I'd like to pray for, for all of you and pray for your intentions. And I, requ I request that you bring your intentions and place them on this altar of God's mercy just so we could offer all together to God. <clears throat> Today I pray too for my dad on his fifth anniversary of passing. Pray and ask that God may continue to rest him. I pray for my mom, my mother. I pray for my siblings and members of my family that God may be with them, that God may watch over and keep them all safe. I pray for our sick. Pray for those who have asked our prayers, especially those who are battling cancers, tumors, heart attacks, strokes. And we pray for those in critical care um, suffering from this coronavirus. Pray and ask that God may bring them help and healing and recovery. We continue to pray for our economies around the world that are struggling. Pray for those who have lost their jobs. Pray for those whose businesses have crumbled. Pray for those who are in constant fear. Pray especially for those who are experiencing real family or domestic tensions and resulting in violence or violent conflict. That God may help them maintain some atmosphere of peace and that we may learn to support each other at a time of great stress. And we also pray for young people. Pray especially for those who should have been graduating this year and are unable to. Pray that God may grant them many more opportunities in life to do so. We pray for our leaders, pray for our presidents, pray for our governors, pray for um, house members of the House of Reps and our senators, pray for all those who make laws, our mayors who lead our communities, that God may guide their wisdom, and that God may guide their decisions, just so that whatever we do at this time will be will be focused on helping us recover as a people. And for this Mass, our entrance hymn will be Immaculate Mary, Thy Praises We Sing. Immaculate Mary, Thy Praises We Sing, Who in noun in splendor with Jesus our King, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria, in heaven the blessed thy glory proclaim, on earth with thy children invoke your fame. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, let us come together at this time and pray for each other from this altar. Wherever you are joining us from, let us pray and ask our Blessed Mother to bring our prayers and our concerns, our fears, our worries, our futures before her son and ask his blessings. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercies, your only son, while hanging on the cross, appointed Mary, his mother, to be our mother also. Like her and under her loving care, 
May we, your children and your church, grow day by day. Rejoice in the holiness of its people and also attract and so attract to itself all the peoples of the earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul reached also Derby and Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. The brothers in Lystra and Iconium spoke highly of him, and Paul wanted him to come along with him. On account of the Jews of that region, Paul had him circumcised, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from city to city, they handed on to the people for observance the decisions reached by the apostles and presbyters in Jerusalem. Day after day, the churches grew stronger in faith and increased in number. They traveled through Phrygia, through Phrygia and Galatian territory because they had been prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching the message in the province of Asia. When they came to Mysia, they tried to go on into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So they crossed through Mysia and came down to Tros. During the night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian stood before him and implored him with these words, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen this vision, we sought passage to Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the song is hallelujah. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Hallelujah. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are, the people, the flock he tends. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. His kindness endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Hallelujah. 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 If you then were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you, with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If the world hates you, Realize that he hated me before you. If you belong to the world, the world will love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, I have chosen you out of the world. The world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you. No slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And they will do all of these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
my dear friends i hope that today is um, a better day for you and i pray that tomorrow will be even a more improved version of your day and that every new day will bring you something to hope something to believe something to dream something to inspire and encourage and drive you forward that's my hope and that's my prayer for you as we daily watch our numbers go up especially here in our country it, it breaks everyone's heart because for every one of those numbers you're thinking about a grandpa a grandma it's so very easy for us to just have numbers and forget that those numbers are individual human beings we just call numbers those are grandpas grandmas doctors nurses neighbors parents children wives husbands brothers sisters best friends future husbands future wives future grandpas future grandmas future doctors academics they are all represented in those numbers and it isn't easy it isn't easy if you can create an image of what that looks like the closest image i get is the world cup the soccer world cup, world cup soccer finals i think there were about eighty thousand people in that stadium in russia and I just think about the fact that how if all of those people were dead and we could just see all of the bodies lying, that would be a very scary feeling. Yeah, that's what we've lost. So this is important and this is serious. So I encourage you to take it seriously. I know we're beginning to open our... our, our uh, communities and open our states and open our country the virus is not gone yet it's still part of us we don't have to be afraid but we have to be cautious we don't have to be broken but we have to be realistic so I encourage you if you're going public please do whatever is prescribed for you to do. This is not time for us to insist on our freedoms. We do have them. We will have them. This is time to think about me, to think about you, to think about someone else. So I beg you in God's name, do the most for people that you care about. So that's my encouragement to you at a time like this. Don't this is not the time for us to um, be careless, please. It's not the time. However, let me go back to what I want to say from the first reading. In the stances of folly, stances of folly, there are four items or four patterns of human behavior that destroy relationships make us angry destroy our ability to build healthy vibrant and encouraging relationships they keep us depressed sometimes or keep us upset because we are unable to be ourselves 
And the first of them is confirmation bias, but that's not what I want to talk about today. The second is separation. The third is isolation. But the thing I want to talk about today is false agreement and how that affects you and affects me and make it impossible for us to be creative, constructive, courageous, to be decisive and to be assertive. We see what is happening here with Paul and Timothy. And what is happening here happens every day in our homes. It happens in our offices. It happens in our governments. It, happen in our, it happens in our churches. It happens between friends. It happens everywhere. And it is a recipe for self-destruction, destruction of the self, but also destruction of the organization that you belong to. Whether that organization is a family, a marriage, it's a workplace, it's a church, it's a government, just, just name it. Behavior like this, it was, it's what undermines our ability to be honest with each other, to appropriately confront each other. And Paul will show good behavior down the line when he confronts Peter. However, today, he was caving. He was caving to the Jews in Lystra. Paul had to force Timothy to be circumcised, not because he thought that was the right thing to do, but he wanted to fall in line, wanted to fall in line and to fall along and to um, just do what everyone else was going to be happy with, or at least not complain about, or not beat him on the head. So scripture tells us, says on account of the Jews of that region, on account of the Jews, not on account of the truth, not on account of what is right, not on account of any value that Paul was defending, but it was on account of the Jews of that region, Paul had to force Timothy to be circumcised because his father was Greek. And I think about how often in your home you are upset with your son or your daughter and you can't even summon the courage and the words to let them know how you feel about what they did. You end up falsely agreeing as though what they did was okay. You try to make it look like there was no problem because you don't want to lose their friendship or lose their relationship. Unfortunately, that's where you end up. When we learn not to speak our truth and speak it respectfully and speak it appropriately and speak it helpfully, what we try to preserve is what we lose at the end. And you think about how many times you in your family have had to give someone in your family silent treatment or passive aggressive behavior only because there's something they did that you are reacting to but don't have the courage or don't just want to take it up with them. If you are impacted by some behavior or some action of someone, have the courage to stand up and say it. That is how we build healthier, loyal, dependable, and reliable relationships. We don't build them by force. They agreeing as though, yeah, I'm fine with that's okay. Not, a, not, not to worry about that. That's okay. I'm fine. When you are not fine. If you are not fine, let it be known. If you disagree, let it be known. If you are not okay, let it be known. That's the freedom that you have. Let it be known. Let us talk about it. Let us address it. Because we care about our relationships. Paul failed Timothy here because he agreed to fall along, to fall in line. Wasn't willing to confront 
this principle or this teaching that was unwholesome, this teaching that was discriminatory against Gentiles and people from Gentile origin. He knew he didn't believe in it. He didn't do it for himself. He did it because he was afraid of people's reactions or people's opinions of him. And how often have you behaved because you were afraid of what people would think of you? Of what people, or how people will judge you? That's false agreement. It is one of the fullest, the four fullest of human behavior. False agreement. You do it and you're walking away and you're angry that you did it. I'm sure you can relate to that moment when you did something like that. We see it in our government. Now there's something that self, that a false agreement also does. It leads to behavior that will end up sabotaging either our relationships or our organization. Now we've, we've seen it, whether in our local or in our national or governments or our churches or our families. What we cannot say and defend publicly, we begin to say and criticize and backbite and sometimes undermine and sabotage privately or quietly behind. We begin to look for and wait for the day to write a book about someone's behavior that we should have confronted for the health of the organization. We don't do it because we're too afraid to do it. We wait until we're no longer part of the organization to become commentators of something we should have confronted at the time. We don't do it. And I think about how our church with psychophants, our government with psychophants, even our families with psychophants who fear to even stand up for what they believe. How much we have destroyed all of these organizations and how better people we would be if we could only find some courage right deep from us to do what is right and not fear to be hated or to be disliked or to be discounted. Paul was too afraid for the Jews, of too afraid of the Jews at the time in that region. And he decided to play along, to fall in line, to be like everyone else, to act as though he, he believed in that in that in that in that um, that rule. And he did not. So I, I, I want you to take this very seriously because each time we do this, this is our own foolishness. This is not about anyone else. This is not about, no, no one suffers more than ourselves because this is where moral injury comes from. I disagree with something, yet I'm doing it. I don't accept a certain um, behavior from you, yet I'm saying nothing about it. I'm acting as though I'm okay. Yeah, let us talk about it. Let us discuss it. Let us come to a better agreement and end up respecting each other better and therefore healing and helping our relationships thrive. They may hate you. They may dislike you. They may say a lot of stuff about you. But when everything is over, believe me, they will respect you. They will respect you. And I'm not saying that because I think it's so. I'm saying that because I know that. I've lived through that. People will respect you. I'm, I'm not saying you pick a fight with everyone. It doesn't have to be a fight. And that's why I said it has to be respectful. Disagree respectfully. Don't call names. Don't become violent. Don't use abusive or cursive words. No, don't. Respectfully, tell them why you don't think that's okay. And have one, two, or three courses of action that you think are better than what this person just offered or just gave. It's okay if they reject it, but at least you spoke your mind. You can go back home and believe and feel good that you spoke your mind, not feeling angry, irritated, just because you were unable to say what you wanted to say. So the Lord said, they will hate you. Yes, they may hate you. And that's okay if they hate you. Especially if you are doing the right thing. The reason why the Pharisees hated Jesus was because he would not do what Paul did. He wouldn't play along. He wouldn't fall in line. He would speak his truth. 
He will defend what he believes. That's why the Pharisees and Sadducees and the leaders of the people just could not stand this man. And we look for this kind of courage where we can stand up for what is right and criticize power and authority because we could become the only thing that allows authority and power to survive in its truest form. The false agreement will destroy the truth of power and authority, will undermine the values of power and authority. We pray that God may help us, dear friends, whether this is in your family. If your husband does something, that's okay. At a good time, let them know how you feel about what they do. Don't make it about them. Make it about how that made you feel. Let them know it. But don't carry grudges about everywhere without letting the other person know that they are the cause of your grievance. It's always I like to end what I say by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, today I offer this Mass, I want to offer this Mass in thanksgiving to you for the passing of my dad five years ago today. I ask Almighty God that you may continue to grant him rest and peace with you. I pray that you may watch over everyone he left behind me, my mother and my siblings and all members of my family. We ask, dear God, that every day may help us draw closer to whatever he had in mind for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray, mighty God, for all those who have died, the numbers we see, and sometimes not understanding that those numbers are people with unique histories, unique values for their families. We ask, dear, we ask, dear God, that you may help us honor the passing of those numbers by doing what is right for each other and for our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders at this time. We ask, O oh God, that you may continue to guide our leaders right, that we may lay aside our differences, lay aside our fights, lay aside our battles, and just look at those numbers and decide to work together and do good for each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick. Pray for people who are battling cancers, those battling tumors, diabetes, heart diseases, strokes, those who, especially young people with mental or physical challenges, that God may come to their help at this time. That God may help them find healing and recovery. Pray especially for those in critical care from this coronavirus, that you, O oh Lord, may speak strength to their lungs and to their organs. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for the intentions that you have brought to this altar today, and I ask that through our Blessed Mother's intercession and through the prayers of Padre Pio and all the saints that you implore, that this offering, our petitions, our concerns, our thanksgiving may be brought to the altar of God in heaven. And from heaven, that his blessings may be granted in full measure to us to meet our needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most gracious God, hear these concerns we have brought to you. We bring them through our blessed mother to you and ask that you may accept and grant them. For we do so through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made it become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, 
fruits of the vine and work of the men hands become our spiritual thing. Blessed be God. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of their hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, accept our gifts and make them the sacrament of our salvation. By its power, warm our hearts with the love of Mary, our mother, mother of the church, and mother of the world, and join us in join us more closely with her in sharing the redeeming work of her son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. We especially praise you and proclaim your glory as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. She received your word in the purity of our heart and conceiving in her virgin womb gave birth to our Savior and so nurtured the church in its very beginning. She accepted God's parting gift of love as she stood beneath the cross and so became the mother of all those who were brought to life through the death of her only son. She joined her prayers with those of the apostles as together they awaited the coming of the Holy Spirit and so became the perfect pattern of the church in prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she cares for the pilgrim church with a mother's love until the day of the Lord dawns in splendor. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare our glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy Broglie, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Charles Starr, whom you have called from this world to yourself, 
grant, dear Lord, that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence using the words our Savior left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, from me to all of you and your families, may peace be with you and may peace abide with you today and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold our Savior Jesus. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us now open our hearts for spiritual communion. Gracious, merciful, ever compassionate, and ever present God. We worship you in this sacrament of your body and blood. And as your sons and daughters around the world worship you, they are unable to receive of you. We beg you, dear God, that you may personally visit with them spiritually and administer your body and your blood to them. And as they open their hearts to you, please nourish, bless, protect heal and restore every one of them and we ask all of this through Christ our Lord Let us pray. Lord, we have received the foretaste and promise of the faithfulness of redemption. We pray that your church, through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, 
may proclaim the gospel to all nations and by the power of the Holy Spirit reach to the ends of the earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in our battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits that prowl through the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Well, before the final blessing, let me take a moment and express my thanks to all of you for joining us today. And we continue to pray for each other. And we hope that when all of this is over, we will be able to gather again as God's people and worship God together. It's always I'd like to remind you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing a hymn to our Blessed Mother. We will sing Hail Holy Queen enthroned above. Hail Holy Queen enthroned above. O Maria, Hail Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria, triumph for ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, heaven on earth we sound the hymn, Salve, salve, salve Regina. Our life, our sweetness here belong, O Maria. Our hope in sorrow and in Cherubim, sing with all the seraphim. Heaven on earth we sound the hymn. Salve, salve, salve.